Today we are going to be making an Appa bucket hat. This video is only on the arrow portion, but if you want to see how I made the bucket hat, then you can click the link in the description or in the upper right corner. And I know for my bucket hat, I did use a 5mm hook, but for this arrow portion, I'm going to be using a 3.5mm hook because I want my stitches to be tighter and smaller, but this is optional. You can continue to use whatever hook you used for your hat. Just keep in mind that your arrow may turn out slightly bigger or smaller depending on your tension and hook size. To start off, we're going to be making a slip knot. And to make a slip knot, hold your yarn with the tail end at the bottom of your hand. Then wrap the working end around two fingers to form an X and use your hook to go under and over and pull that through. Remove your fingers and tighten the knot. Now we're going to chain, and we're going to be chaining 22 chains total. You can make this bigger if you want a bigger triangle, or smaller if you want a smaller triangle. Just make sure that it has an even number of chains, and once you have the base of your triangle, we're going to do a double crochet two together into the third and fourth chain from the hook. To do a double crochet two together, Yarn over, insert your hook into the third chain from the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through just two loops. And then instead of completing the double crochet, we're going to yarn over and start another double crochet into the next chain. We're going to insert our hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through just two loops. And now we'll have three total loops on our hook. And we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So this just combines those two chains into one stitch. And it's also called a decrease because we're decreasing the amount of stitches in this row. And we're going to be doing this at the beginning and end of every single row. So for the next 16 chains, we're going to be doing just one double crochet into each of them. And once we get to our last two, we're going to double crochet two together once again. And again, to do this, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, which is the second to last one. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, the last one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through three. And as you can see, the decreases on either end of the row cause the outsides to be slanting upwards and we're just going to continue this pattern until we reach the top. For row 2, we're going to chain 2 first and turn. And then we'll do our double crochet 2 together. And then we'll do one double crochet into each of the next stitches until we're left with two at the very end. Which is where we're going to do our next decrease. And we're going to continue this pattern where every row has a decrease on either side. And you'll eventually get to the point where you only have two stitches left. Here is where you do your final decrease. And then we're going to chain one. And then we can cut our yarn and pull with our hook. You actually don't need to leave this end super long. I do end up cutting it later on because I use another loose end to sew in the arrow. Now that we've done the triangle part, we can move on to that long strip. And we're going to be attaching our yarn to the foundation chain that we did in the very beginning. It's up to you how wide you want this strip to be, but I made mine 14 double crochets across. To get it evenly in the middle, you want to count how many chains from the end. So I skipped the first three chains and attached my yarn into the fourth chain. And then I'm going to double crochet until there are three chains left. To attach your yarn, insert your hook into the chain that you want to attach your yarn to. Then grab your yarn and loop it through. And make sure there's a tail that you can 
tie securely and then we're going to chain two and double crochet into that same chain that we just attached our yarn to. And like I said earlier, I'm going to double crochet until there are three chains left. Since the base of my triangle is 20 stitches long and I'm leaving three stitches on either side, I'm going to end up double crocheting 14 across before I stop. Now that I have a spaces of three chains on either side, I'm going to chain two, turn, and continue the rows for the rest of the arrow. And we're just going to be doing one double crochet into every stitch across. And after this row, we'll chain two, start the next row, and continue until we get the length that we want. So here I've done 27 rows for the strip and I'm just going to lay it on the hat to make sure that it fits properly. And I'm choosing to line up the point of the arrow with the start of the brim in the front and then it's going to go over the top and the end of the arrow will line up with the start of the brim on the back. And as always, you can place this arrow anywhere you want. Also take into account how it will look when you're wearing it because I do wish that I had placed the arrow a little lower so that it would be more visible because right now all you can see is the triangle so I might fix that later on, I don't know. But just remember to keep that in mind when you're sewing this on. Also if you do decide to slip stitch all around for a cleaner look then take into account how much longer that will make the arrow. So I am happy with how long the arrow is right now. So I'm going to start slip stitching all the way around so that I can make the edges straighter. This is optional and it is honestly a little bit tedious. So if you do want to skip it, then that's fine. You can just skip this part and sew your arrow right on. And I do add chapters to my videos so you can skip ahead to that part if you want. And if you do want this cleaner look, then here's how you would do it. So we're just going to start off by working along the left side of the arrow where we left off and to slip stitch we're just going to go into the side, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. And the sides do not have defined stitches so just go in wherever you feel comfortable and just try to space it out evenly. You don't want to put too many into one area or too little into one area. And you can see how the slip stitching makes the side so much straighter than the other side. And so we're just going to continue until we reach the corner. When we do reach the corner, we want to put a slip stitch into that corner. And make sure you don't miss that corner, otherwise your arrow will become less defined. And then we're just going to slip stitch along the triangle, and once we reach the corner, we're going to do three slip stitches into that corner. And then we'll work along the triangle again and in the next corner do three slip stitches again and the same to the last corner. And once I've reached this point, I'm going to stop and fasten off. After our final slip stitch, we're going to chain one and then cut off our yarn. And I'm going to use this tail end to sew in the arrow to the hat. So I'm just going to estimate how much I need and don't worry too much about this estimation part because you can add more if you need to. Then we'll cut the yarn and pull through with our hook. And the next step is to sew it onto our hat. And I am going to use the back of the arrow to cover up the seam on the hat. I'm going to start by pinning the arrow to the hat with some bobby pins. You can use safety pins or any other pins you have. And you want to try to lay the arrow down flat, otherwise when you sew it in, you could accidentally warp the hat and change the shape. So once we have everything pinned down, we can start sewing in our arrow. So first, we're going to grab our yarn needle and thread the yarn into the needle. And you can use whatever sewing method you prefer, but I will be using the running stitch. It's very easy and very simple to do, and it'll be practically invisible. First, we'll secure the corner by going under a loop on the hat, and then going back up into the corner of the arrow. And 
and then we'll move up along the arrow and go into the arrow with our yarn needle. And then we'll pick up a loop on the bucket hat and come out a little higher along the arrow. So we're never piercing through the arrow and the hat at the same point. We're always moving further along with each one that we pierce through and that's how we're going to sew the whole thing. And we'll continue doing this stitch all the way around. If you didn't end up giving yourself enough yarn to sew in the arrow, then what you want to do is tie a knot with the rest of the yarn and you might want to double knot it just to make sure it's really secure. And then we're just going to tuck away the rest of the strand under the arrow. And to attach another piece of yarn, we're just going to loop the yarn into one of the stitches. And we're going to double knot it and then hide the end. And then we'll just continue sewing with the rest of the yarn. Once we get to the very end, double knot it and hide your end again. Then do the same to any other loose ends you have and that should be it. So that is all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.